If you want to pop the highlights and create a bit of shimmer in your skin, this method is really easy and gives lots of control. One thing though, the retouching on the layers below has to be absolutely perfect. If it isn't, the skin sheen will actually exaggerate the flaws. I'm using it here after applying um, a light reflecting digital powder, just to add even more sheen to the skin. I'm going to now briefly show you the retouch layers for the image. Let me have a look. I'm just going to turn off the retouching here in full. So that's the background that I started with. I'm turning the retouching group back on and just turning all the main retouching off so you can see the colour without the actual retouching. I'm going to collapse that. I'm going to turn on my retouching and turn off the layers within that. Okay, so we have a curves dodge, some grafts for the neck and the hair, and we have some retouching for that. We have a neutral soft light layer, and I have a whole group here for the features. I've worked a lot here on the eyes and on the lips, and I'm sure there's a little bit of shading in there as well. It looked as if there was. Now finally here is a powder, a digital powder layer. And that's where I'm going to pick up now, as if I was in the workflow here. Before I take my first step, I'm going to turn the colour off. So turning off the whole colour group there. As in previous tutorials, this is because you don't want to double up the colour when you now make a new layer. I'm going to click the New Layer button, Shift, Alt, Command, E to stamp visible. And let me also show you what actually would have happened, because I've got such strong colour here. Um, I'm going to turn that on and show you what it would have been like if I stamped visible with the colour layers on. You see a doubling up of colour there. So yes, make sure that you have the colour off. Now before we move any further, we're actually going to turn the colour back on. So we move from here with the colour uh, group turned on again. Highlighting the layer 2. The layer 2, really, the joined layer, is just to make sure that you are on an image layer when you're making your color range. Now we're going to make our color range, but first I'm just going to press DX. That will always give you white as the foreground. We're going to base our color selection here on the lightest highlights. And that's why we want the foreground swatch here to be white. So select and color range. And as you see here, you pick up some color and it's the white that picks up first. Now I could use localized clusters, but I prefer not to. Here, I actually want as much spread as possible around the face. I have experimented a little bit with this and how much, and I've come to something in the range of 40. Okay now, and what we get is just a selection. You can see the little marching ants here. I'm gonna now make an adjustment layer, a solid color. And the color I'm going to make is going to be 252, tab, 252, tab, 252. That's in RGB. In CMYK, that gives the tiniest bit of dot. This color, I'm using this instead of white just to make it um, printable. If we blow out with too much white, the chances are there's going to be a almost a white hole in the image that's not going to be printable. So that's why I choose a fairly moderate color. Now it's important to remember to highlight the mask on this one because uh, unlike other adjustment layers, this is not highlighted on the mask automatically. We're going to go into the history and I'm setting the history source to the current state because I'm going to borrow from it a little bit later. And I'm now going to fill this mask. If we look at it just before I fill it, you see the effect there. Now I think there's too much in the forehead and a bit too much around here and on the nose as well, but we need as much as possible um, around this area and I like the lips as well. Also, we've got to consider the eyes. So I'm just going to turn it off again and on again. And yes, we've got to be a little bit careful with the eyes here. So we literally fill the mask, edit fill using black 
or just the shortcut command backspace. And because we've now got the history brush set to the previous state, we're going to just take the history brush now and instead of painting in with a normal paintbrush in the mask, we're using the history brush. So we can set this not too low, not too high, somewhere in the middle. Okay, we're going to just start down here where I know that I want as much as possible. So I want the full impact of it in the chin. In fact, for this, I'm just going to take it right up just to work efficiently. And then I'm going to take it down in opacity. I'm working with a brush size of 500 uh, or more here just to get that nice fall off. Remember, there's no going back when it comes to the history brush and to in order to get um, smooth results, you have to work with a big brush. And often one stroke can be enough. So let's have a look at our mask just for a moment here. And that looks well distributed there. Those highlights look very well distributed. So I'm not going to go any further, really. And there we are. I'm just turning that off and back on there again. I haven't actually used any of this in the eyes. What I'm going to do is just uh, also cover the eyes just a little bit, especially the insides of the eyes can pick up a little bit on this. And the edges of the eyes where there's an, some eye makeup there that could do with picking up um, a bit of this shine. But I think I'll stop there. Uh, let's have a look. Yep, that's enough. Okay, so I can now get rid of my layer two. Now, some people do a variant of this technique and they um, actually put a bit of blur on it. So let me just show you that. I'll probably not use that. I prefer it nice and sharp, but I'm just going to put some Gaussian blur on it. Using a blur, which you see there in the preview, you can um, add more of a shine than a sheen, I suppose, to the skin but you do sacrifice some sharpness. So I'm going to cancel that and leave it as it is.